What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today I've got another swatch review for you. So today we are talking about the new OPI Nature Strong polishes that came out for spring 2023. So if you didn't know, the nail polish brand OPI somewhat recently released a new line of polishes called their Nature Strong line. And these are a little bit different from their regular nail polish line. All of the polishes in the Nature Strong line are nine free, meaning they are free of nine of the potentially harmful ingredients that can be found in nail polish. They are also vegan, meaning they do not use any animal derived ingredients, and they're cruelty free, meaning they do not test these products on animals. They're also listed as being made from plant and mineral based ingredients, and the bottle and cap are made of 20% post consumer recycled materials. So a little while back, they came out with this line of nail polishes, and they had 30 new polishes in that line, which I did review. I'll put it up in the cards if you're interested in checking that out. But this is their first first Nature Strong release since then, and for spring 2023, they have come out with eight new polishes. So yeah, let me show you the swatches of the polish, then we'll talk a little bit more about pricing, availability, my thoughts on these new colors, and on the Nature Strong line in general. So let's roll the swatch footage first. So as with all of my swatch and review videos, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent any stains. Today I'm using the Orly Bonder base coat as usual, so I'll link it below. So we'll start off with the cream finishes. This first one is called Kind of a Twig Deal, and this is a really beautiful neutral cream shade. It's kind of a dusty pink color, but it has a little bit of a beige blush kind of vibe to it. So it's actually a really nice office appropriate color. I was really impressed with the coverage at this one. I ended up getting it full in two coats, but do keep in mind that I do have short nails. So if you have longer nails, you might need more for this one. But I did think that the formula was really impressive and every time I wear OPI, I am just reminded how beginner friendly their formula is. This Nature Strong line is no exception. It feels really easy to apply. Next up, we have the shade A Kick in the Bud, which this name cracked me up. It is so cute. I do want to mention that I just recently reviewed the OPI regular line of spring polishes, and those names were awful, but these ones are hilarious and adorable. But anyway, A Kick in the Bud is a really gorgeous neon hot pink kind of color. It's not quite a neon, but it's incredibly bright. It has a little bit of a jelly-like formula, but it still reaches full coverage. So for me, that took two coats. It's nice and shiny and a little bit squishy, and it looks really beautiful on. Next up, we have another well-named polish. This one is called Be The Change, and it's this gorgeous golden yellow color. Is this called Marigold? I'm not actually 100% sure, but that kind of feels right for this polish. It's just a stunning yellow color with this orange undertone to it, and it definitely gives me bumblebee vibes, so I feel like that would be really cute for nailer, but it's also really cute on its own. I feel like at first it didn't look like it was going to be fully opaque in two coats, but once it dried and leveled itself out, I feel like I could wear this one in two coats. I ended up putting on Aether just to show you in case you wanted to see it a little bit fuller coverage, but honestly, I think at a regular distance, I would absolutely wear this one in two coats, and like I said, it is self-leveling, so even if you're not particularly careful with application, it does level out pretty nicely and it makes a really good manicure. Moving on, we have the shade Leaf by Example, and this one's actually a pretty deep forest green cream shade, and oh my gosh, it is so gorgeous. I absolutely love a good green nail polish, and I feel like there aren't enough of them in the world. I have to say, I was very surprised to see this color in this collection because I feel like it's a little intense and dark, but looking at it now on the nails, I actually feel like it suits the time of year pretty well. There's a little bit more of like saturation than I would see from, for example, a fall green. Maybe it's actually a little bit more wintry, but I think it's a good transition color. I love that cooler undertone to it. And again, the formula is just stunning. It applied really nicely and it gave me full coverage in two coats. And then we have the last of the cream finishes in this collection. This shade is called Big Beautiful Planet, and this is actually actually what I'm wearing on my nails in the intro and outro to this video. It's a gorgeous medium sky blue cream, and you can see it was a little bit thin on the first coat, which is something that I noticed with a lot of these, but it ended up giving me really nice coverage
edge in two. It was actually just barely there in the second coat, but in the intro and outro, I am actually just wearing two coats because I thought it leveled out really nicely and I feel like I couldn't see any patchiness or visible nail line or anything. But again, for the video, just because we're doing this super close up, I figured I would show you a third coat. And like I said, it is just barely there in two coats on my short nails. So if you have long nails, you'll probably need a third anyway, but what a beautiful color. Again, it feels like a really nice transition from winter to spring. And I like the very slight dustiness to it. Next up, we have the shade Glowing Places. And this one is a metallic foil polish. Now this one, I would consider to be more of a champagne color, kind of sitting between gold and silver. And we have a nice little bit of warmth in there. It was a little bit sheer in the first coat. Like I said, kind of usual with this collection for whatever reason, but I did end up getting full coverage in two coats. It might look a little bit sheer on camera, but I think that's just because it was so reflective. You could actually see me <laughs> in the reflection of the nail a little bit, that kind of beige color in the middle. That's my reflection. So very pretty, very shiny polish. And the final two polishes in the collection are glitter toppers. This first one is called Mind Full of Glitter, and this is the gold version. So we actually have a duochrome pink to gold shimmer in there, as well as two different types of gold larger glitters. So we've got some, I want to say mini light gold hex glitters, and then we have a little bit more of like a yellowy gold in an irregular flake. So here's what it looks like in two coats. Honestly, this color is really gorgeous on its own. It's so funny looking at this one because OPI has done shades like this before. And when I first got into nail polish, I absolutely hated them, but now I love toppers. So I love them. So I wanted to try this one over a couple of different colors. I put it over a kick in the bud and I thought that looked really gorgeous. I think it really highlighted the pinky color in that shimmer, which is kind of hard to see unless you're wearing it over a darker color. But I think these ones paired together really nicely. I also wanted to try it over black and I feel like that gave me the most transformative look because you could really see that intense pink almost into fuchsia. And I think it really highlighted the gold particles very well. So definitely a party on your nails and it really looks so full and vibrant over a dark color. And then we have Eco for it. And this one is the silver version. I thought they were gonna be the same polish, but in gold and silver, but I found that this one was actually a little bit different. So we do have that duochrome shimmer in there. This one is a blue to silver duochrome. And then it is absolutely packed with mini silver hex glitters. So we didn't have the multi-sized larger glitters in there, but it still looks really gorgeous. This one to me feels like a great transitional color into spring. It does have a little bit of that wintry element to me, just with all of the cool tones. And I don't know, for some reason, blue and silver together always just make me think of winter snow. I thought it would look really pretty over the green leaf by example. And I was absolutely right. I love the way that the blue looks against the green here. I think this combination is absolutely stunning. And again, it does give me a little bit of a wintry vibe. It looks kind of like a forest in the winter with snow over it. But again, I wanted to try it over black. And again, it looked really transformative. I think over deep colors, these types of duochrome shimmers just really look stunning. But of course you can wear them over any color. And that's one of the things that I love about toppers in general. I just like experimenting with different color combinations and I think they always look really cool. And even when they don't look really cool, it's still interesting. <laughs> so here are all of the shades together and looking at them as a whole, it almost seems like this might not be be geared specifically towards springtime as a collection. It might just be that they were adding more colors to flesh out their existing line of polishes in the Nature Strong line, but I still feel like a lot of these shades are just perfect for springtime. And I think we have some really good basics here and those really pretty toppers, as well as of course the metallic foil. And again, I cannot say enough good things about the OPI formula. I know not everybody loves OPI, but I absolutely love their formula. It's the first salon brand I ever used. And I'm so glad for that because I feel like it made learning how to paint my nails so easy. So those are the polishes. And overall, I really enjoyed these. I do love the OPI formula in general. I think that they're really a classic mainstream brand. And I think in general, they're very beginner friendly. Personally, I really love the Nature Strong line and I would love to see them doing regular Nature Strong releases.
is. One thing to note about OPI is that the regular line of nail polishes that they have are not vegan and they're not cruelty free. So this is the only line from them as far as I'm aware that is vegan and cruelty free. I would just love to see them switch over permanently to that formula because I think it performs just as well. Clearly they're able to make really great colors out of it. Overall, obviously that would be a lot better. But I do appreciate that they at least have this nail polish line where they are making an effort to do that. So I would just love to see more of that or at least I would love to see if their line of nail polishes also came in a nature strong version just so at least their consumers can decide if they want to purchase from the regular line or if they would rather have a vegan cruelty free plant based formula instead. And hopefully the more that they see their audience enjoying the nature strong polishes they come out with the more likely they are to actually switch over permanently and I think that would be really great. Hopefully we will see a nature strong holiday release from them at the very least this year. I think that would be incredible. But yeah, the OPI Nature Strong comes in the same size bottle as the regular OPI. It is a 15 milliliter bottle. It does have the same brush. It's a wide flat brush with a straight tip. Like I said, the bottle and cap are listed as being 20% post-consumer recycled materials. It does look a tiny bit different. We do have like a sort of whitish gray cap instead of a black cap. But other than that, it basically performs exactly the same. I usually get mine from HV -E Beauty Bar and there the Nature Strong line retails for $9 USD. And you can also use the discount code Kelly to get 22% off your order. So I will link that down below as well as some other options if you are interested in picking these up. But I'm really curious to hear your thoughts on these polishes. What do you think of this collection specifically? What do you think of the Nature Strong line? Would you like to see them make a more permanent change into doing Nature Strong a little bit more frequently? Let me know in the comments. We can chat about it. If you enjoy my swatch and review videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. I also have a couple other YouTube channels. I've got my vlog channel, which is a little bit more about my life outside of nail polish. And I also have a podcast. It's on all streaming platforms, but it's also on YouTube. It's called It's All Geek to Me. So I will link that up in the cards as well. And of course, a huge shout out to my supporters on Patreon and my Royal Astronomer, Amanda M, as well as my Cosmic Admirals, Rocket Man's daughter, Paula, Ken, Rosie, and Courtney. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Amanda and Amanda wants to know in all of the smoothies you make, what is your favorite flavor? So if you didn't know this about me, I am very big on smoothies. I love making them. One of my favorite things about living in a place where it's a little bit warmer year round is that I can drink my smoothies even in the winter. I just recently got a very fancy blender so that I can make my smoothies whenever I want. And I talk about it sometimes on my vlog channel if you're interested in that. I think I have two favorite combinations. I'm not terribly picky when it comes to smoothies but there's some ingredients that I absolutely have to have. So I would say the ingredients that I need to have in a smoothie in order for me to enjoy it is frozen banana and vanilla almond milk. Those are just perfection. So my two favorite combos are almond milk, banana, and strawberry. I think it honestly just tastes like strawberry ice cream. Or I like to do blueberry, banana, almond milk, and then spinach. And I don't know, there's just something about that that tastes so fresh to me. And I absolutely love that as well. Sometimes I'll use like frozen mango or pineapple or whatever's on sale. I recently bought cherries, but I don't love them in my smoothies, but I'm trying to work my way through the bag. And if I have it, I also love to add ginger to any of my smoothies. I think that just adds a little kick that I think is delicious. So yeah, those are probably my favorites. Anything that has a slightly green frozen banana in it and vanilla almond milk is going to taste pretty good. But yeah, if anybody has any smoothie combo recommendations, definitely let me know in the comments and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!